Today, let's talk about the Battle of Alia and the first sack of Rome. Well, let me back up. Today, I'm starting my series on ancient battles, and I just felt that I should quickly explain myself in the first episode. I love ancient history and ancient warfare. The scale of it's almost unimaginable, and it still amazes me to think about 80,000 men fighting for their lives in formation. Most attempts on media that I see are not accurate, or they don't tend to show the sheer size of ancient battles. Rome on HBO was a rare example of an attempt at least, but most recreations of ancient battles are incredibly stylized and fantastical. I mean, look at it. This is very, very pretty, but it's also very, very not how the Battle of Marathon happened. I, it's really sad, because the Battle of Marathon's a cool story, and this story is a stupid story. Stupid. Stupid. Sorry, I got carried away there. So today's my first attempt to bring you the battles themselves with the Total War engine, and also the lead-ups along with the aftermaths of the battles with Skyrim, and some other educational resources. My hope is to be as accurate as possible and educate in an entertaining way. I hope you enjoy. Okay, let's talk about the Battle of Alia and the First Sack of Rome. Chances are, if you hear someone talking about Rome and the sack of Rome, they're normally going to be talking about the one in conjunction with the end of Rome in uh, 410 AD by Alaric. But we're not going to be talking about that one today. You guys all fought naked, eh? Seems like you get... Yeah, you get hurt. That's a boo-boo. <coughs> Don't fight naked. But yeah, we're going to be talking about the sack of Rome in 390 BC. And let me tell you... The sources for this battle, and really anything in Roman history before this battle, aren't good. We have three. Diodorus, guess where he's from? Plutarch, and Livy. Now to try and give you an idea of how far after the sack of Rome my sources are writing, I'm going to give you an example. Imagine a thousand years from now, the only history that we have left written down from the American Revolution is written by that Glenn Beck man in this century. Now that's not as crazy a comparison as you might think, because, as you might know, the Romans were hyper-patriotic. Let's meet the first person in our story, Marcus Furius Camellus. I know he looks a lot like General Tullius from Skyrim, but he's Marcus Furius Camellus. And by the end of the story, he'll be called the second founder of Rome. Now, at this time, Rome was at war with their mortal, mortal enemy, Veii, which was 12 kilometers from Rome, so way too close for the both of them to exist. After a series of wars with Veii, Rome eventually got pissed off and voted Camillus dictator, which basically gave you supreme authority over, like, all the armies in Rome. So, he went off to besiege Veii. Okay, so just to segue for a second, when you're thinking about the Roman Empire, most people think of this... We're talking about the Roman Republic at the beginning, and it's about this size, so just keep that in mind. Anyway, back to the story. So, Vei's walls are pretty huge, and they were holding out pretty good. Actually, they held out for ten years, which is kind of suspect to scholars nowadays, because it's analogous to the Trojan War. Either way, it seemed like things were going pretty good for the Veians, Veiites? I don't know. Seemed to be going fine for them inside the city until Camellus decided to dig a tunnel underground into their sewer system. Oh, yeah, there they go. So they came pouring out of the temple in the center of the city and just started slaughtering wantonly all the male citizens. They also sold all the children and women into slavery. Before Camellus conquered the city, he promised 10% of the wealth from his city to the goddess Juno, if he could pull it off. For whatever reason, he didn't bug the soldiers while they were looting and plundering, and kind of forgot his promise. Then when they got back to Rome, the priests kind of flipped out at him when they heard about his promise, and he passed a bill taking 10% of the soldiers' wealth. So this was definitely sort of a rift between them. Not only that, he argued for some reason against repopulating Veii, so they left, even though Rome is super overcrowded and not far away. He was off to besiege Faleri. But, 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 but. First, we have to switch over and meet the second prime mover in our story. His name is Aaron. He's kind of like a nice merchant, and everyone really likes him, and 
just it's generally agreed he's a nice guy. So Aaron, nice guy, and he's got a nice wife. She doesn't have a name in the story because I guess the Romans didn't think she was important enough. And he's got a little foster kid. He's got a little foster kid, and he's the heir to a really really big fortune. And his name is Lucimo. So anyway, there's Aaron he's going off to work, he's going to make money and provide for people, and and there's his wife. She's going for a nice nap. Good, good, nice nap. It's always fun to nap in the day. So, this story's about to get kind of weird. It appears that Lucamo had a thing for Aaron's wife. And it appears that she had a thing for him. So, yeah, yeah, they're doing it. So they keep up their little affair for years, really, until Lucamo grows up. Like, it lasts a really long time. And then, you know... Aaron's just sitting there oblivious, he just doesn't know. Like, look at him. Is he just sad? Just sitting there reading it. Why are you reading it into the corner? How did you not see that? Idiot. Oh good, okay. He's finally stopped reading. And when Aaron's realized what was happening, very slowly, he ran out and dealt with his problem the way a lot of people deal with their problems nowadays. He sued the pants off Lucamo. But that didn't really pay off either, because Lucamo, as I said, had a lot of money, and bribed the shit out of the court, and won the case. And Aaron's was understandably not happy. There he goes. Really not happy. But let's take a break from Aaron's and go see how Camellus is doing in his besieging of Valeri. Oh, evidently not good, they have walls again. So they were doing pretty good inside the city. Functioning quite normally, actually, like school was on and everything. Speaking of school, Camellus kind of noticed something strange while he was watching the city. There is this teacher, and he'd take these kids outside of the walls, kind of just outside the walls, for a bit of exercise every day. And every day they get a little bit further out. And further. Until the dude walked right up to Camellus in his camp, and he tried to give him the boys. Camellus's reaction to this was to have the guy stripped naked, and he gave the kids a bunch of weapons, and they beat his ass all the way back to Faleri. And when the Falerians heard about this, they sent a guy to the Senate, and he pledged an allegiance to Rome, like, right away. And the Senate was like, awesome. And the soldiers, on the other hand, were not happy, because they were already poor from the whole, like, Veii thing, and they just wanted money to loot the city, and they didn't even get to loot the city, so they were just angry. Uh, now, this isn't the era of Roman history where when Romans got angry, they got stabby. This is the era that when they got angry, they exiled people. And that's what they did to Camellus. I mean, it's not like the city's gonna fall if we exile Camellus or something. And then the Celts invaded Italy. How did that happen, you ask? Yeah, as if right on cue, there's our good friend Aaron's. So, Aaron's was angry at Lucamo, and his wife, and the court, and really all of Italy. So, he got on his horse, and he went on a visit to the Celts. And he gave them a shitload of wine. So, when the Celts eventually woke up from their crazy bender, they were pretty surprised at this stuff, because they had never tasted any wine before. So, they woke up, and they were like, hmm, that was pretty awesome. We should invade all of Italy for its wine. Okay, really, who wrote this? This is Plutarch. Plutarch, you be crazy. So, the Celts decided to attack Clusium first. And right away, Clusium sent to Rome for help. And Rome sent an embassy to deal with the Celts. But, either they got there after the battle had already started, and just decided to start killing Gauls, and they accidentally killed a Gaulish chieftain, or they got there and the Gauls offended them, and they killed that Gaulish chieftain. It's hard to say which, because my sources don't agree on which story is right. Either way, the embassy went right back to Rome, and I guess, good job, embassy. When Brennus, the leader of the Celts, found out, he was pissed. But Rome could still fix it. They just had to punish those two embassy guys. Okay, that's the Senate honoring the two embassy guys. So Rome's gonna get sacked. 
But that's all we're gonna do today. So, next time you will see the Battle of Alia, or three different versions of it, because the historical sources I have for them are so contradictory. I want to thank my friend Jeremy for helping me film the Total War Battles, because they're really hard to film with just the AI. Every frame of painting, because his videos really helped me figure out how to structure my videos, so you should really go check out his channel. And Christian, my good friend, and my awesome girlfriend, Heather. I'll see you next time. Battle of Alia.